Hello, how are we doing here? This is Mike again, and we're going to continue on our differential equations pathway, our differential equation pathway. And in, in this part, I actually want to discuss um, exponential growth models. So exponential growth and decay models. And I'm sure we remember learning some variation of the formula y equals sum y naught e to the kt power. Uh, some of us may have seen, you know, a equals c e to the rt power, where where the initial population or the initial something is equal to this coefficient. So this is the initial initial population. It could be an initial mass. It could be the initial amount of money. Uh, we we've seen this. We've seen this this exponential growth and decay model a lot of very a lot of different variations. This value of k, this value of k indicates uh, a a value of of is indicates a model that is that is growing if k is greater than zero. If it's positive, it's growing. If this exponent is negative, if the exponent is negative, then we know that it's a decay model. So the exponent is indicative of whether or not we're growing, k being positive, or if it's negative then we know it's a decay model. So I'm sure we use this going back to our pre-calculus days or college algebra days. This is uh, this was probably one of the more interesting parts of, of my growth academically was that was that I started understanding where that model came with. And, and what happened is that we're going to learn in differential equations that when you're given an initial an initial value, then you no longer have a, a general form of a solution, you're going to have a specific form. So, so there's going to be something called an IVP. An IVP, we call these initial value problems. Initial value problems. So that's going to be an IVP, initial value problem, where you're given some initial condition. So if we were to give you the differential equation dy over dt is equal to k times y. Where k is a where k is a constant, k is a constant, and we're going to give an initial condition, and we're going to say at time zero we have some initial value y naught. So when so again this is our form y of t being the being the solution being the solution, then this will be equal to a value of y naught. So I should I shouldn't really say y t, but remember y t is some function of some function of of y and we're looking at specifically the time t equals to zero this gives us a value of y naught so this is our initial condition so I'll write initial condition this is a separable differential equation so let's go ahead and separate this so the first thing that I want to do is get my y's on one side my t's on the other side so I'm gonna have dy equals to ky dt and now I'm going to divide both sides by y. So I'm going to divide both sides by y. So I have dy over y equals to k dt. And k is just a constant. k is a constant. And we're going to learn that k is going to be positive or negative. But right now, k is a constant. If I want to solve this, since I have my y's and dy on one side and my dt on the other, where k is a constant, I can integrate this so I get the natural log of the magnitude of y. And assuming k is a constant, like 2, 3, negative 1 half, and so forth, when I integrate dt with a constant, I just get k times t. I get k times t. So, but remember, we would say there's some constant, but remember, when y, when time is equal to 0, we have some initial population, why not? So y, y subscript, um, y, why not? That's y subscript, why not? So let's think about this. When y is equal to, when time is equal to zero, when time is equal to zero, we have a special circumstance. So let's go ahead though, let's go ahead and find out when we let y be equal to zero, I'm sorry, when we let t equals to zero, we know that we're going to have the ln of the natural value, absolute value of y is equal to k times zero plus a constant. So the ln of y is equal to a constant. The ln of y is equal to a constant. So this is an interesting part for us. So, so we could even go ahead and solve. We could even solve and say y is equal to e to some constant. But that's specifically, um, that's specifically when, when our y is equal to 0. But let's go ahead now and make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more interesting. And before I even did that, let's go ahead at this point, let's go ahead at this point and raise both sides 
to the e power. So to the e power. Like this. And remember, our exponent properties, if we have x to the m times x to the n, this equals to x to the m plus n. So if I'm adding two different exponents, just like we're here with kt and c, I know that e and the ln will just cancel, so I have y equals to e to the kt times e to the constant, which is where this is sort of coming from itself. Remember, e is a value, c is a constant, e to a constant will give us another constant, which gives us c e to the k t power. So we realize that y is some function of time gives us c e to the k t power. And that's going to be how we get this, this exponential growth in decay population. It's just, the, it's just solving a differential equation. And remember that differential equation was dy over t is equal to a constant times time. And this is just a first order differential equation. But we have some initial condition constraints that, that we're going to have some some constant why not when time is equal to zero. So that, that, that makes some sense. And I'm sure we've done a lot of problems when we've worked with this. I'm sure we've done a lot of problems where we worked with this. So let's go ahead and try some out just to make sure that we feel, we feel uh, pretty comfortable with it. So I'm just going to give an example. We always love talking about special cultures and we'll just say some bacterial culture. I'm not going to write the whole thing out. Uh, some, bacterial, some bacterial culture uh, initially, initially uh, has a mass equal to, let's say, 12 grams. Has a mass equal to 12 grams. So after, so I'm just going to write this, after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, um, the mass has increased to 15 grams. So, okay, it's gone to to 15 grams from 12 grams. I feel pretty good about that. So let's go ahead and say that we have an unlimited, unlimited growth model, which means there are no constraints on this bacterial culture. They have all the resources that need. They have an infinite amount of space to grow. So this is going to be an unlimited growth model. We're going to compare this to, to, a, to a restricted growth model, inhibited growth, um, but this is a, some unlimited or uninhibited growth model. So a lot of times you might see uninhibited as well. So you might see uninhibited. So uninhibited growth model. So that means it can keep going forever and ever. There's no, there's no restriction. So many times we say we want to model something as an unlimited growth model or, or a uninhibited growth model because during the time that it's, it's expanding, the population is increasing, it is actually unlimited growth. At some point, it's going to plateau off, and that's when the unlimited or the inhibited growth model becomes a inhibited or a restricted growth model. But for right now, we're going to assume an unlimited growth model. So let's go ahead now and let's say that we want to determine a model. So let's say we want to determine a model. A model, a model that determine a model that models, something sort of weird, that models the bacterial culture, that models the bacterial culture when the mass is below one hundred grams. So we want to find that. That's okay. Um, and then we'll ask, uh, we'll ask the most famous question. So I guess this will be part A, then part B. How long will it take this population to double, to double? From its initial mass. So this is, you know, pretty much a, a historical famous question. How long does it take to double? If you guys are in a calculus or differential equations class, you should feel very comfortable with this question. So you can remember that y equals some initial value e to the kt. Some value, this is the initial, this is the initial population, initial something, e to the kt power. We're just going to plug and chug. We're going to plug and chug. We don't have to actually derive, we don't have to derive from 
from dy dt equals to kt. I don't, I don't want to worry about that. That's just a little extensive. If we know that it's uninhibited, then we can safely use this model and just plug in. So we have y equals to the initial, the initial population, as was said, was a value of 12 grams, was a value of 12 grams. So this was the initial, this is initial population. And let's go ahead and plug in. So we don't know our value of C. So, I'm sorry, we do know our value of C. This is a value of 12. This is equal to K times some value of T. But we know that after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, the population increased to 15 grams. So this is a very interesting circumstance that Y of some time T will equal to that 12E to the KT. But we know after 10 minutes, as I just said, yes, 10 minutes, as y after 10 minutes will be equal to that value of 15 grams. So this is going to be 12e to the k times time, which is 5. So our time here is going to be in minutes. We just have to be consistent. So we're going to say that 15 will equal to 12e to the 5k. So let's go ahead and make sure and reflect that we knew how we got this. Now we're going to divide both sides by 12, divide both sides by 12. And here we know that we're going to have 5 force is equal to e to the 5k. In order for us to solve for the value of k, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we get the ln of 5 force is equal to e to the 5k. I'm sorry, it was equal just to 5k because ln of e cancels, and we're left with 5k. So we divide both sides by 5, so we know that k is equal to the ln of 5 force divided by 5. I'm not going to go ahead and change that. I'm just going to leave that my value of k. So to answer our initial question in part a, it wants the model. We know y is some function of time. This will be equal to our initial, our initial value um, excuse me, our initial value, which was a value here of 10, because, I'm sorry, it was a value of 12, that was our mass, was 12. Let me just check to make sure our value was 12. Yep, our value is 12. And this is going to be equal to e to the ln of 5 force all over 5 times t. So that constant here is ln of 5 force all over 5 times t. So I feel really comfortable with that. I think that's a, uh, a really good... Um, a really good idea. Wait, let me make sure something looks funny. Uh, oh my goodness, so time t is not 5. Oh my goodness, so, so um, okay, so let's just say this is a value of 5. Let's change our initial problem. <laughs> Sorry, so uh, so I, I plugged that all in and I just, one of the tough parts for me working back and forth is that I, I missed the time. So let's say after 5 minutes the, the, the mass increased to 15 grams, which will make this value of t correct it'll be a value of 5. So, so now this will be our new constant. So, uh, so we're going to feel pretty safe with that. Now if we want to find the time that it takes to double, we know that initially, initially our population was 12. When it doubles, we know 12 times 2 is 24. Therefore, I know that my final population 12 will be equal to, sorry, a final population of 24 grams will be equal to 12 grams times e to the ln of 5 force all over 5 times t. Dividing both sides by 12, we get 2 equals to e to the ln of 5 force all over 5 times t. Taking the natural log of both sides, we'll get rid of that e. So we're going to have the ln of 5 force all over 5 times t. And dividing by that natural log of 5 force all over 5 on both sides will give us the final result of the time being 5 times the ln of 2 all over the natural log of 5 force. I, I, don't, like, um, I don't like plugging into a calculator. I very rarely keep calculators on me. So, uh, so I'm just going to leave this time to double as this value here. Well, actually, let's go ahead and get the calculator out. So I'll just uh, I'll get the calculator out. Texas. And there we go. Where's my calculator? So <laughs> I should have a calculator here, but I didn't bring a calculator with me. So, uh, okay, I found my calculator. So uh, shame on me. So we're going to have five times the natural log of two. And I'm going to divide this by 
the natural log of 5 fourths, 5 fourths, and notice when we get approximately 15 minutes. So we knew that it was going to be greater than 5 minutes because 5 minutes it took the population from 12 to, uh, what do we say it was, 12 to 15 grams. So we knew it was going to be longer than 5 minutes. So we get approximately 15.5 minutes. So the time for this population to double will be approximately 15.5 minutes. And my units are consistent because I plugged in initially. So that's how we're going to do initial value problem for, uh, for exponential growth. And this would be consistent. This was decay. Most times if we're looking at a decay, we're looking at radioactive decay or carbon decay. So sometimes we see some radioactive element like uranium, it'll decay at a certain rate. Carbon also has a certain decay factor as well. So again, we've done this before. We've done this before in many classes, but hopefully now you see how that equation is derived. And that to me was a really exciting part of, of learning differential equations is how this, this exponential growth function is derived.